All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Sunir Shah, who is actually all the way up in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Sunir? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Absol absolutely. It's quite different San and Diego, Toronto weather-wise. So I'm kind of jealous of where you are right now. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, Sunir is, uh, has solved SaaS partnership problems at FreshBooks Olark and is president of the Software Cloud Association, the SaaS Partnership Network. And we're going to talk about your, your current company, which is AppBind, and how that solves the billing challenges that partners face uh, when combining multiple SaaS products into a into a bundled service. So, um, Sunir, let's let's start at the beginning, and maybe if you define the problem, because some people may not really know what the problem is yet that that uh, you're solving. Well, I answer from two points of view, which is because the partnership. There's two of you, right? Actually, three of you mm -hmm. with the customer. Uh, but here, here's the thing: when I was younger, when I was 18, I'm 42 now. So I was working in the dot com uh, licensed software. I was working at a Microsoft development shop. And initially, we were consultants. And I was 18. I never thought anything of it. Uh, when we quoted clients our work, you know, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people who are, who are listening to this are basically digital consultants of some kind. Um, it was a lot easier back then. It was just like an auto mechanic or a plumber or a general contractor. We would just mm -hmm. quote time and materials. We, we would quote the computers, the networking cables, the Windows licenses, the SDKs, plus our time to build the system. Uh, you know, and it'll be like $300,000 to the implementation of a three-year contract. And the president of that consultancy, she told me, I mean, I was 18, I was very curious. Um, but like she said to me, you know, we're not selling you. I mean, it's nice that you work really hard on, you know, and your labor is very nice, but we're not, you're, you're just a hello. What we're really selling is a system because that's what customers really want. And the real value of selling the system is that three-year contract for maintenance because mm -hmm. then you can sell them upgrades, you know, upgrades, maintenance, and then of course, keep talking to them and find the next system, the next system, those become tenure clients. And that, yep. that made perfect sense to me when I was 18, because that's been like that since the age of the pyramids, we've been working like that mm -hmm. with humans for thousands of years. I never, I never, no one would ever think of it any other way. And then, and then later on, we turned that consultancy into a product company and we built a product and, uh, you know, it was a small company. So I was sitting next to sales. Uh, we're selling in the telco and the broadcasting channel. So those are all channel sales, like back in the day, like you would almost never sell direct, just a little bit. And then you would work yep. through channel partners. And it was really easy. People would call us up, hey, I love your product, it solves a problem. I think I can sell it. How do I get it? And we, we were just like, okay, just what's, <laughs> we'll invoice you and what's your what's your address? We'll FedEx you a bunch of boxes. You know, that's how it was, you know, literally. Yep. Right. So then like, that's how I grew up thinking about software. And honestly, this is how Microsoft so, you know, got to get yep. with, yep. right? They're 1.3% of the world's economy. One of 80 people are fed by Microsoft on this planet. Mm, fact, they wow. figured this out, you know? Uh, but now we're talking about cloud software, subscription software, and this doesn't work anymore. When, mm -hmm. I, was, uh, and when I was in 2007, I became the, you know, I started the marketing team at a company called FreshBooks. Uh, this is actually yep. how I'm we're just talking. I, I know Todd from Piper. I know, I know yep. from all the way back then in time. Uh, and so, um, you know, we're partnership people. And so I thought, you know, just because I was young, it was 2007, beginning of subscriptions. Sure enough, we'd sell software the same way we sold license software, like box software, right? But it uh, did not work because the problem with subscriptions is anyone knows who's tried to actually sell a subscription. There's two problems. Your partners don't know how to actually get the software. Like, how do you sign up for an account? You have to yep. sign up. Right? Like, how do I sign up for a customer's account? Who owns the data? How do I manage it if I'm managing doing solution services? Either way, if I'm just doing, you know, resell, I can't figure it out. And then the billing is a total nightmare because it's not a transaction. It's a recurring, yes. unknown, like it changes price all the time. It's all like, so there's a lot of bookkeeping overhead. And then if you're in the middle of the transaction, you're also taking on the liability uh, of you're basically extending a loan to your clients, which is a lot of financial risk for a partner. And what we've ended up doing uh, in, in, the, in the subscription channel is instead of creating opportunities for a partner, we're actually creating risk for our partners. And that's why the whole thing has collapsed. So that's the problem. I, I, I know Pipeliner has experienced this itself because yes. you have a bunch of sales consultants. They've been experiencing similar problems. And you have a, a solution with a reseller portal to solve this. But this is the general problem. 
um, you know, do you agree? I hope, I hope that resonates. Oh yeah, no, no, I, t I, tot I, I totally agree. And I think part of it, the, yeah, there's, there's a big issue. As you said, a lot of the channel, a lot of the, the channel companies today and individuals and companies came up the same way you did. Uh, and, you know, very, very comfortable with the old way of operating um, in the new way of operating. It, there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances and there's a lot of kind of moving parts involved in it. And as you said, when everything is in the cloud or if it's as if it's SaaS, uh, there's a sort of they don't really I, sometimes I feel like partners don't really feel like they're invested in the product because it's off there somewhere in the cloud and they don't really know and they're kind of reluctant to to get too involved in it. Um, as you said earlier, if they're going to do work, who owns the data? What about the integration? What can I What can I do? Who owns the, I mean, even as much as who owns the customer and at the end of the day, who supports the product? I mean, there's all well, so many different things that come into play. This is the whole thing. It becomes like a love triangle. It's hard to get invested <laughs> in the love triangle. I just, yeah, I'm yeah, watching yeah. Bridgerton right now. Sometimes, sometimes there's not a lot of love in that love triangle, but that's oh, okay. I know. Well, <laughs> and this is the thing. But this, so, I mean, I can't get away in a sales podcast without selling a little bit. So this is yeah, the sure. problem that we solve at AppBind. So what I what we do is we actually figured out if you're a SaaS company, let's just start with that, those companies. If you want to sell software through partners, like a solution partner, you, you can't do it because of the billing. It's too difficult. But AppBind mm -hmm. actually solved that problem. I have, we found a very simple solution. So you can actually sell subscriptions through solution partners. And more importantly, they can incorporate your software into their package of services and solutions, yeah. sell it to their client, what's, what they care about. And we take care of all the billing. And we do that without having to touch your billing system, without having to touch your account management system. So we can actually stand it up in, inside of a day. So you and the sales team can go ahead and just make the sale without having to drag the whole company along with you. And I bet everybody you know who's listening to this has talked to someone who's like, yeah, I who's a partner, just like we used to have. They call us up when I was when I was a kid. We love your software. How do we get it? I used to say, what's your address? We'd ship, well, I did, sales guy. Mm -hmm. I'd ship you a bunch of boxes. You don't have the equivalent answer, but now you do. If you come to AppBind, you, you do have an answer. And he, here's a little trick about how we do it. You know, what's a subscription? It's an email and credit card, really. So we create a shared virtual email and a shared virtual credit card that your partners can use to sign up for the subscription on behalf of a client. But the email is forward to the partner so they manage the account uh, and put forward to the customer so they own it. And the credit card, instead of putting the partner's credit card in, which is hell, uh, they put in the, the shared card, which automatically expenses and bills the client so that the partner is not in the middle of the financial risk, but the client is paying for it from the beginning. Uh, and this actually mm. is magical. And of course, you can transfer the shared email and credit card from the partner to the customer if the relationship ends. So they can actually do a true resale. Uh, and it's like such a simple idea, hard to build, of course, mm. but uh, immediately easy, so easy because everyone already has self sign up, you know, you yeah. email and credit card. And then suddenly these partner sales that you've been like, I don't know how to do this, struggling, you're pulling your hair out, I lost a lot of hair figuring this out, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you know, suddenly becomes like, oh, like a five minute conversation. And, you know, the, the really what AppBind looks like, if you want to really understand it, it's just a quote to order. We issue a quote. It's called a subscription order, a purchase order yeah. from the partner. Just a quote to order, but it's done through the partner indirectly. And we have a little quote to order machine that makes it all work. Yeah. So the customer agrees, pays for it, signs, and then the partner can go and make the purchase. We use these virtual shared things so that the partner can actually transact and pick up the software and give it to the customer effectively. Yeah. No, that's yeah, because yeah, I was going to say because you're correct because one of the one of the, I mean that's one of the areas where the wheels come off sometimes with 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 partnerships is is the whole financial part and sometimes it gets confused and sometimes as as you said they're spending a lot of time sort of wrangling or going to accounting departments to invoices then redoing invoices all of this kind of stuff so I mean I I absolutely see see where your where your product could solve a lot of those problems because at the end of the day. If you're getting into a partnership, you're getting into a partnership, as you said, with a channel partner and with their customer or whatever, and you want that love that love triangle to be a blissful one. Yeah, and you're asking me, I, I didn't want to skip past it. I don't want to answer yeah. it. But I want to bring, why does it feel so ephemeral if they're not really committed? They just feel like it doesn't count in the cloud. Yeah. It's because they're not telling you the real answer. I, I've talked to thousands of agencies, like between FreshBooks, Olark, and now AppBind. Uh, mm -hmm. I have... Re I've actually spent more time now talking to our partners and other SaaS companies, even though I run the trade association, all the SaaS companies, uh, Cloud Software Association. So here's the thing that is really difficult. Something some of your listeners understand it. The scale mm -hmm. the problem is 
uh, the, the, these companies sell time and labor. And so yep. the moment you put risk on their shoulders, they can't fan it, finance it. They'll go under water. And so, but, but they don't want to lose the opportunity. They, 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 they need your relationship because they're supporting clients with your software. They need you to help them. They're just really just not willing to commit to you. They're not willing to tell you to go away because they don't really want you to go away. They want you to figure it out. Uh, but right. like, there, there's an issue that the agencies have that I think is really important to understand. They are in something called the scalability trap. Uh, and it's because they sell labor. Labor is a treadmill of hell. And yep. <laughs> what's a scalability trap? It's the only business, labor businesses, where the more revenue you have as a, as a consultant, right? The more payroll you must therefore have to fulfill it. And therefore the next month, the more revenue you must have. As you get more revenue, the more risk your business has. It just actually increases the risk the more bigger you are rather than get lower. That is crazy. Uh, and, that's, and that was not how it used to be. You mm -hmm. remember my story when I was 18, my president of that consultancy, she told me, we don't sell you labor, we sell systems, high margin, right? Because yeah. yeah. you know, there are no more systems anymore in, in, in subscriptions. It's very difficult to build one because you can't actually procure your own parts. And I actually had a client who fired me when I was consulting just before I started AppBind, who really like drilled it in to me. I was doing analytics consulting, but he was a fashion retailer who was actually building a bricks and mortar store. And I wouldn't buy, you know, talk desk and branch and amplitude. I tried to make him buy this computer science nerd software from his point of view. He's like mm -hmm. literally making clothes, you know. Yeah. He didn't like he didn't understand what I was talking about. And he's like, he had it out with me. He said, Sneer, my plumber is not making me buy my own pipes. I expected you to take care <laughs> of it for me. Working with you is 10 times harder than not working with you. I was like, yeah, yeah right. And what I learned from that is I, I we had a good rapport. I talked to him. It, he, he, uh, this plumber thing was really real for him because most people are used to normal contracting. The subscription yeah. world, the digital world is like not normal contracting. It's totally a, mm -hmm. a, an aberration, yeah. right? Absolutely. Like a typical plumber, like his plumber or his HVAC person or whatever is running this like for the store, they, they would build the system. Like he was like, I need cooling. I need water. I need all this stuff. They would go buy the pipes. They would go the valves. They go buy the pumps. They go buy the, like the air conditioning, whatever, you know, they go deal with it. You don't want to know. Right. And then they would maintain it for like they'd have a maintenance contract for it. Right. And that's really where yeah. the value is for these companies is they have the maintenance contracts. Uh, but that doesn't happen anymore with subscription software right. where all you're doing is implementation or you're just operating a system, configuring it. You know, they don't know where to be. But I say this because there's actually an answer to this question. I'm talking to sales leaders out here listening to this. If you're trying to sell a subscription product through a consultant, right? It's really easy. Uh, it's much easier to do it in, in a solution sales way rather than a referral way where they're basically handing the customer over right. to your customer success team. You get the mm -hmm. partner to be the front end and then build services by solving the problem for the client, including you as a part, right? You can give them better margins because they're taking off some of your costs as well. Uh, yeah. That actually will motivate them to build a business on you. And conversely, if you are a solutions company, right, it's much better to start putting together packaged services by bringing in the technology you can leverage to deliver higher value outcomes to customers. That's where all the margins are, right? And therefore, you must control the plumbing. You know, you have to control mm -hmm. your own pipes and valves and pumps because that you're a tech company too. You may not be writing lines yeah. of code. A plumber may not be making their own pipes, but the plumbing yeah. system is the technology they just delivered, yeah. right? right? Your, your system is actually... That like whether it's a sales pipeline that you're building, there's a lot of sales consultants around Pipeliner. They're delivering yeah. you know, Pipeliner and Vidyard and whatever, right? And Zoom Info, they're building the whole systems out. Yeah, and then yeah. that's their value add. They're figuring out how to deliver consistent revenue pipeline. That's the outcome. And this is the technology is their, is their plumbing, right? And that's yeah. really high value. And I love what you mentioned there about the scalability, you know, the, the trap, because uh, anybody who's ever been in a consulting business or has been a, you know, set up their own consulting business will recognize that, you know, it's that whole thing about you go get you go get the business and then you have to deliver it. And so when you're delivering it uh, and then billing and all of that kind of stuff, you kind of forget to prospect and fill your pipeline so you end up you know it's a lot of consultants end up and and small company consulting companies end up in that feast or famine because yeah, they're dealing with so pipeline. many moving yeah. parts yeah that's right that's right the sawtooth right you you, you, yeah. you sell you sell one month and then deliver the next three months and then you have to go back selling up and down up and down yeah. right and and the other and the other thing that that puts a lot of um small consultancy businesses or consultants out of business is when you do that, 
you're going great. Look at all the revenue I have coming in. But it doesn't mean you're getting paid immediately. And it doesn't mean you have the cash flow and all of that kind of stuff. And then if you've screwed, you know, if if you've screwed up the billing or if there's something like that, it, it can be quite catastrophic at the end. I keep hearing stories every every month now of like a media buying agency, you know. So that's a pretty common thing in advertising yeah. that you would actually underwrite the media buy. Because that's how it used to be. If you ever watch Mad Men, that's exactly what they do, mm-hmm. right? And Omni, you know, the reason why they're Omni and they, is that they have a really good line of credit. They can finance Coca-Cola's ads. Right. Um, but the problem is you can't really finance ads for a customer if they deadbeat you. And then I've heard so many stories uh, of these agencies uh, going under because they were extended uh, $50,000 of credit, which is two months of payroll. And that's it. Mm-hmm. That was the end, you know? Uh, so... But, but one of the things that we do with AppBind is uh, we solve this problem by actually uh, pre-funding you with the, with the, from the client. So we actually hold the money in like an escrow expense account. So you have the money in trust before you run their expenses. It's so much high trust, so much better with the client. So they know they've extended you a controlled amount of money in the controlled space to run the expenses. And you have the confidence you can purchase things because you have money sitting in an account that you can actually look at. Um, right. You know, you should never extend loans to your client. I mean, they're the ones who have all the money. You don't. Yeah. Well, especially especially because what often happens and especially to small consulting groups or individuals is, you know, maybe you get a gig with a, a really large company, huge company. And you think this is fantastic. They're the worst. They're the worst of paying you on time because yeah, you know, ninety days. They often, yeah, well, they are ninety days, or then they'll say, "Who's that? Oh, that's that little company over there." I shove them out to next month. You know, they don't care um, often. So, I mean, this is where I, I love this idea. So, basically, what you're saying is, so the customer, you know, funds it. You hold it in an escrow, so it's kind of like a virtual, as you said, a virtual credit card, and then the the partner can expense against that as they deliver work. That's right. And that's right. And it makes it so much easier for you. First, for you, first try to solve the problem for the consultant because they have an yeah. immediate problem. I call that Tuesday afternoon problem. Like, what's the problem right now? You know, uh, that's the problem. Is like they're in the middle of the financial risk, which they don't need, and they need something, whether it's a subscription to Pipeliner or is it a subscription yeah. to ads or whatever they're doing. So that's number one. Second, pro- or AWS, it doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. But the second problem, and this is, you know, what is the real value? And I, I started by preaching this because I, I, at FreshBooks, I'd seen this so much uh, between the subscription people and the really, uh, really d- drill down into that. Real problem. Well, clients just want you to take care of it for them. Yes. And the problem is that's the only thing clients want, whether you are a digital consultant or an auto mechanic or a plumber or even a nail salon on their bride's wedding day. They only have one need. They're freaking out and they want you to take care of it so they can get back to whatever else they're trying to do. And if they knew how to solve the problem, they would have done it. The problem is a lot of times in B2B, they have tried and failed to solve this problem for whatever reason. They themselves are incompetent. Like they, they just don't know what they're doing. It's not like they're incompetent, but you know, Everything requires yeah, different yeah. skills or the organization can't deliver capacity or, you know, whatever, but they're feeling, you know, quite stressed about their own capability. They're already late and they're trying to bring someone else completely new in and they don't trust you. Right. So uh, what are you actually selling? Every contractor is the same thing. You're only selling two things, calm and selling, getting the customer. Like I said, it's the same, whether you're a digital consultant or mechanic, fixing a car or plumber, a leaking basement or or a nail salon on a bride's wedding day control. And so what does AppBind do to do this? And which is actually magical when I've seen it now, because I've been running it now, see how it changed agencies. Everything about what we do inside doing for you, I, I'm, I'm using one place, subscription manager that's organized in one place, and you own and control everything I'm building for you. You'll see everything. The money is in a secure place. There's a monthly spending limit. All the transactions mm-hmm. are very clear and transparent. There's no jiggery pokery. You know what? What we're charged, you'll see. What we make right. for our money, you'll see. Everything is transparent and clear. What it has done, surprisingly, is is created. Well, not surprisingly, we designed it this way. But <laughs> surprisingly, <laughs> uh, it worked. Yeah, uh, it was. It creates permission with the client. It's like, oh. And and I think I think that's one of the I think that's one of the most powerful parts of it is is the way it's it's building that trust relationship. 
That's great. And then you can then amazing. You can actually expand the number of services you have. So many companies are just like stuck in Facebook ads, right? They never believe it. Well, now you can put landing pages up. You can put a pipeline in. You can do all yeah. this, right? Yeah. Uh, you can expand the number of services, and it's natural. Like if you're talking to that customer, this is what we President of consultancy told me when I was 18 that th that three years SLA that we had the service contract, you know, was actually a 10 year contract because we kept telling them more things, right? The more you talk to yeah. them, you can find more opportunities, right? And that's actually yeah. that's how you get out of the trap. Like you have to get out of that trap where you're just every month is a, is, a, is you're starting a business from scratch. You have to get out of it. Yep. No, hundred percent. And and the other part, and the part of that then too is, uh, you know, you're not spending, as I said, you're not spending your time on billing and invoicing and having these, because that's when you end up having tons of conversations that you don't really want. So instead of talking to them about solving problems, you're talking to their, you know, finance department, or you're talking back to the, the vendor themselves. So it's 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 a lot of running around for it's low value, obviously no value in many ways. Well, it's actually hyper negative value. Actually, you know, your sales <laughs> yeah. professionals, right? You know, so every time you bring something to the customer, it's peripheral to the sale, right? Yeah. Uh, your your probability of, cl of closing goes down. Now in the channel yeah. sale, where they're brought in a service partner, you know, I tell this to SaaS companies. You know, the problem is, like I said, customers are freaking out all the time. They think I've seen this. Whatever you bring to them must be a five alarm fire, and you're like, no, I just, you're just gonna buy pipeliner. Like, what the, what yeah. are you even talking about? Like, we agreed this is what's happening. We need twelve seats to this. Just mm -hmm. credit card in yeah. here, and they're like, what? What is a CRM? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, so it's, it's it's very true. Yeah, and it's because it's, for them, they're already over their skis. They're already freaking out. Right, and they already feel incompetent. So anything you bring to them, they have to decide. They, if you, if you, they don't know you yet. If you, if they make a mistake yeah. with you, right, they're gonna get totally killed. They, they need to CYA for themselves. And this is actually totally meaningless. As for you, as a partner who's taking care of it, you also need to take control of your own work and stop putting yeah. stuff in front of the clients that they don't care about. And this is my experience with that fashion retailer bringing him Bayesian analysis. Like he's like. What does this have to do with clothes? Like oh, it's conversion rate optimization. Yeah, it's a, I'm trying to optimize yeah. statistical analysis. Yeah, no, it's 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 a great it's a great point. And listen, Sunny, we're bumping up against the end of the time sure. here, but this has been great. Um, before we go, all of Sunny's information and app buying will be below this video. But please do just uh, give people another reminder of what you do and where they can find out more. Yeah, uh, yeah. So appbind.com. Uh, app is an app. B is in banana, bind, Brenner's, it means like contract binding. I don't know, we're dorks, that's how we came up with it. Appbind.com, <laughs> Sunir, S-U-N, as in uh, November, India Romeo, at uh, appbind.com. So such so S-U-N-I-R, at appbind.com, email me. I'm on LinkedIn, Sunir Shah, uh, and I have the trade association. So if you're into SaaS, yeah. partnerships, cloudsoftwareassociation.com, and our conference is coming up end of April, SaaS Connect. Dot org. Uh, that's the first time we've been together in three years, all the partnership people. It's crazy. Wow. It's, it's going to be, I'm, I'm sure people will be sober some of the time. I'll just put that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But um, I wouldn't bet on that. But uh, <laughs> there you go. No, uh, listen, this has been fantastic. And don't forget to, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. We love to hear what you have to say. Uh, and don't forget to share with other people. Particularly, here's a great solution. I guarantee you there's a lot of you going to be watching and listening this to this are either in a in a kind of partner business today or management or know people who are and you probably heard them complaining about this exact issue so i would encourage you to go check out appbind uh so listen thanks again sonir thank you for watching and listening i'll see you all again really soon thank you so much yeah.